Over the past couple of weeks, I've been building a home automation application which consists of several Python-based microservices. I am currently building everything on a Linux VM where I write the code and build Docker containers for each microservice with Docker Compose. Images are stored locally and if they get deleted for some reason, they always get built back up by Docker Compose. Now, this has worked great for me for now, purely due to the speed at which I'm able to make code changes, build and spin up containers, run some tests, and then rinse and repeat. But now that I have kind of a stable version of the application, I would like to deploy it to a Kubernetes cluster and actually start using it. My goal later on is to set up a local Git repository and CI-CD pipeline, which I will use to consistently deploy newer versions of the application. And of course, an important piece in that puzzle is the ability to host container images, and that is why I need a private container registry. A private container registry enables me to store my private container images so that I can easily build and push container images either from my local machine or via a CI-CD tool like GitLab CI. Pods in my Kubernetes cluster should also be able to pull images from the private registry. Now, there are a number of good private registry options out there, but I have to choose one, so I decided on Haber. Haber is an open source registry that secures artifacts with policies and role-based access control, ensures images are scanned and free from vulnerabilities, and signs images as trusted. Sounds good enough for me. So today I want to show you how I set up and configured Haber as my private container registry and how you can also do the same in your development environment. There are two main things your Kubernetes cluster should have in order to install Haber. You will need to have a storage provisioner in your cluster to provide storage for the various Haber components that require persistence. You will also need to have an ingress controller to provide HTTP access to the Haber instance. I have Rookself installed in my cluster for storage and an Nginx ingress controller for HTTP access. You will also need to have Helm installed on your machine. If you're not familiar with Helm, Helm is a package manager that helps you install applications in Kubernetes. Helm applications are defined in a chart, which is a collection of manifest templates that describe the Kubernetes resources required for an application deployment, such as pods, services, and config maps. Included in the chart is a values file in which we can change or set custom configuration for the application. To install Haber using Helm, first you need to add the repository containing the Haber charts with Helm repo add. Then you can pull the specific Haber chart with Helm fetch the name of the chart and add dash dash untar to decompress the tar file after it has been downloaded to your machine. You should now have a Haber folder in your current directory containing the Haber Helm chart. Before you can install the chart, you need to set some custom configurations first by editing the values.yaml file. First, you need to configure ingress for your Haber instance by setting the host name here. Also, set the ingress class to whatever ingress controller you have installed in your cluster. The last configuration you might need to set under ingress is the client max body size annotation. If you're using the Kubernetes Nginx ingress controller, you do not need to add anything as this is already satisfied by this annotation here. However, if you're using the official Nginx ingress controller, you need to add this client max body size annotation. This enables you to push large Docker images to the registry without running into the 413 request entity to large error. Next, you need to set up the external URL from which your registry will be accessible. This should match the ingress host. You also need to configure persistence for the Haber components by setting up a storage class. I have a Rookself storage cluster running in my k cluster and have created a storage class to provision block storage to my workloads. So in my case, I have set the storage class of Rookself block for the registry 
job service database redis and trivi components Hubba does provision its own Postgres database and Redis instances as part of the default installation, but you can also configure it to use external instances if you would prefer to use the Postgres and Redis you already have in your network. You can do this by setting the database and Redis types to external. Lastly, you can change the Hubba admin password from the default one here. I left mine as default for now. You can now save the new values and install the chart. You can first create a namespace for the Hubba installation and change the context to that namespace. To install the chart, you run helm install and provide a name of the release, say Hubba, and then the path to the helm chart. After the installation is complete, you can run a few kubectl commands to verify that everything set up correctly. Kubectl get pods should show you all the Hubba components that were just installed, including the Postgres database and Redis. Kubectl get pvc shows the volumes created and used by the various Hubba components. Kubectl get services shows a Hubba registry service running on port 5000. kubectl get ingress shows the ingress created for accessing the registry. You can now type the ingress hostname into a web browser to access Hubba's web administration interface. You can log in with the username admin and the default password Hubba12345 if you do not change it earlier in the values file. Once logged in, the first thing you can do is head over to the projects and create a new project. Give your new project a project name, say K8, and click OK. You should now be able to build and push container images to your registry under this project. Let us try that out by typing docker login with the registry URL in the terminal. Provide the admin and hubba12345 login credentials when prompted. This will throw a certificate error which basically means that Docker does not trust the certificate authority of the self-signed certificate used by Haba. If you already have certificates issued by a trusted CA like Let's Encrypt, for example, you can set them up in Haba and in your Ingress controller. But like me, you likely do not, so you have to configure Docker to skip the certificate verification. To do that, you need to edit the etc docker daemon.json file and add your registry domain name under insecure registries. If you are using Windows or Mac, you can do this under settings, then Docker engine. Save and restart Docker for the settings to take effect. You can now retry the registry login and you should be successful this time. So at this point, you should be able to push and pull images to and from the registry. Let us try it out. If you pull the nginx image from docker hub with the docker pull command, this should save the image directly to your local machine. You can verify this with the docker images command. In order to then push this image to hubba, first you need to tag the image with the private registry like this. Be sure to specify both the project we created earlier and the image tag. Run docker images again to see the new tagged image. You should be able to now push this image to your registry using docker push. In the Hubba web UI, you can check the repositories under the k project for the image we just pushed. In order for Kubernetes pods to use the Hubba registry to pull images, you need to repeat the docker login and insecure registries step we did earlier on each Kubernetes node if you are using Docker as your cluster's container engine. If like me you're using container D, you can follow these steps. First, we need to edit the container D configuration located at etc container D config.terminal on each case node. Then you need to add the following lines to the file. The first two lines configure a new registry that ContainerD can use to pull images. 
the next two lines tell container ID to skip the search check for this registry. And finally, the last three lines define the credentials to be used to log in to the registry. I will have all of this configuration as well as all the steps we took today linked in the description. Save this file, restart container D, and your Kubernetes cluster should now be able to pull images from Harbor. You can verify this by creating a test deployment using an image from the registry. Let us use kubectl create deploy to do that. Let us make sure that the pod started successfully. You can also describe the pod to show the image pool process. And there you have it. You now have a fully functional private container registry in your Kubernetes cluster. Don't forget to check out the Git project in the description below and leave a like if you enjoyed the video. Please consider subscribing and I'll see you in the next one.